book of Genesis chapter 2 and beginning at verse 7. If you have it, please say amen. amen. And the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. One more scripture, if you don't mind. Let's look at St. John chapter, <coughs> chapter 20. <coughs> St. John chapter 20. St. John chapter 20 and verse 22. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. the Lord, add a blessing to the reader and the hearer of the doer, lover, than those who obey his word. Mm -hmm. We want to talk just briefly, and I do mean briefly, from the thought, I can breathe. I can breathe. Certainly we are in a time and season when what has happened to our dear brother George Floyd has been on the news nonstop. Several weeks we have seen the marches across the land and on the streets. The people are coming out saying Black Lives Matter. They are holding up signs. No justice, no peace. Holding up signs, injustice anywhere is injustice everywhere. Holding up signs saying enough is enough. Then there are others holding up signs saying, I can't breathe. George Floyd's final words were engraved into the minds of the American psyche. He was crying out for his mother, asking for help from his mother because the police officer had his knee on George's neck. George was begging, pleading, crying for his mother, but he was also distinguishedly saying repeatedly, I can't breathe. My brothers and sisters, uh, when we can't breathe, when a man or a woman or a child can't breathe, the asphyxiation process began to set in. Our bodies are designed to be able to breathe. In fact, breathing is one of those voluntary and also involuntary functions of the body all night long throughout the day every day of our lives from the moment that our mothers brought us into this world and the doctor slapped us on the bottom and we cried out for the first time and brought in our lungs for the first time the breath of life from that moment to this very day, we have all been breathing. Look back over your life, and you can see that you would not be here today if you had not been breathing. We were breathing through the hard times. We were breathing when we didn't have a dollar. We were breathing when we, when it was raining outside, when the storms were coming. We were breathing through Katrina. We were breathing, amen, when our nation went upside down with the election of a racist in the White House. We were breathing. We were breathing through the civil rights. We were breathing through slavery. We were breathing through the Egyptian culture. And all throughout humanity's history, mankind has been breathing. It's important to understand that breath is a necessary function of life in this world and one cannot live 
without the ability to breathe. I remember when I had suffered my first heart attack and I was able to breathe. I was breathing sporadically. And they told me to relax and let the oxygen do the job. They put the thing in my nose and put the cup over my mouth. And they were putting, forcing oxygen into my body because they knew if I stopped breathing, I wasn't going to be able to live. I remember when I first learned how to swim and they threw me off in the deep end of the pond and, and then I had to figure out real quickly that I can't breathe underwater. And I had to come up and even though I, was, I felt I was drowning, I was trying to get up out the, the bottom of the pond and I finally got up just enough to get some air and went right back down again. It was only by the grace of God that I got out of there and then they threw me right back in there again. But I learned how to breathe in adverse condition. Sometimes, brothers and sisters, God will place us in some deep waters. Lord, have mercy. And we got to just get enough breath to breathe. George Floyd could still be here today. If they had only allowed the man to breathe he would probably still be able to function and more than likely would have a good lawsuit on his hand if he was only able to breathe. How many people have lost their lives not because uh, they got shot, not because uh, they was in an accident, not because they had some debilitating disease, but all because uh, they could not breathe. Breath. Is essential to our function. Our body lives. Our body functions properly as we breathe. And when we breathe, we bring in oxygen into our bodies. The oxygen goes through our lungs. The lungs supply it to our blood cells. The blood cells provide it to the rest of the body. And when we are breathing properly, the whole body can function as it should. But all it takes is just a few missed breaths. And the whole body begins to struggle. Stress immediately sets in. The pupils begin to dilate. The heart rate increases. The sweat glands get involved. The lungs pause. The blood cells are wondering what is going on. The rest of the body is waiting with bated anticipation on the next breath because your whole body knows if you can't breathe, everything else is going to shut down. Brothers and sisters, there is a such thing as being spiritually incapable of breathing. Somebody today, it's not that you're not breathing with your natural lungs. You're breathing fine. You, it's not that your, your body's not able to take in air from your nostrils or your mouth. You're able to do that well. Your lungs are functioning properly. The blood cells are getting what they should. The oxygen is being converted to carbon dioxide and then being uh, disposed or expelled from the body. But the bottom line is your spirit is dying. You're not able to spiritually breathe. Brothers and sisters, what we have in the spiritual realm is that many of us, the devil has his knee on our neck spiritually. And we've been crying out, I can't breathe. This COVID-19 has put its knee on the spiritual neck of many believers and they have been struggling all since this pandemic, not able to breathe. And many of them have started going back to their old ways. All because they could not breathe. Instead of them plugging up to the oxygen that God has provided for us. Instead of them plugging up to the Facebook that God has given us. Instead of them connecting to the daily prayer life. Y'all ain't going to help me. Instead of them watching and keeping up with what the church was trying to do to ensure that they could breathe. They let the enemy put 
put his knee on their neck. And I'm preaching to a bunch of spiritually George Floyds all across this land. I know y'all don't like this kind of preaching, but I'm back. Hallelujah. And here we have people, the enemy has had his knee on their neck, and now they're right back out there hoeing again. Lord have mercy. The enemy has had his, neck, his knee on their neck with the COVID-19, and they have not picked up their Bible since we've been in this pandemic. The enemy has had his knee on their neck. They ain't praying no more. They ain't fasting no more. They're not consistent anymore because they let the enemy get his knee on their their neck and they are spiritually dying and on this father I wish I had time to really get into this on this father's day I came to tell you it's time to breathe again the essence of our lesson our lesson, essence of our lesson is found first of all in the book of Genesis brothers and sisters chapter 2 there God hallelujah formed man out of the dust of the ground the Bible lets us know that he made man out of the dust of the ground and sprinkled amen the, the formation of man picking up the dust not, God didn't need to have uh, the best mineral God could have chosen gold I wish I had time. God could have chosen emeralds God, God could have chosen peril God could have chosen diamonds but but God but God God scraped the dust off of the earth and, and formed man out of the least valuable mineral on the earth it's dust everywhere it's dust in some of our home dust on the ground dust on our car some of us got dust on our clothes dust is what God just just used to make man the least valuable mineral of all and through that dust God 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 formed man shaped man making man into an image out of the dust he could have used gold but we'd have thought we were big and bad then he could have used silver, but somebody would have felt they was big and top notch then. He could have used diamond, but somebody would have been conceited and arrogant. But all of us brothers and sisters, no matter how educated you are, no matter how rich and powerful you are, no matter how high you have ascended on the social ladder, you ain't nothing but dust. Dust I am, I came from the dust, and dust I shall return. God formed this dust, Sister Felicia takes this dust and forms man, fashions him after his image. The Bible lets us know he made him in his image and made him after his likeness and, and God looked at man as man is laying there on the ground with eyes that can't see ears, that can't hear a nose, that can't smell a mouth, that can't talk a heart, that can't breathe lungs, that can't breathe a heart, that can't beat blood vessels that can't work, an intestine with nothing in it, a stomach that can't digest, a liver that can't excrete. He had man laying there with organs that could not work and man is laying there dormant and not able to move at all. But God, but God saw him laying there and said, I got to do something in order for man to get up. He stooped down and breathed in the man. Oh, I wish I had time to work on it. The Bible says he formed him, Sister Edna. Formed man out of the dust of the ground. And then God breathed. In the man. He breathe. Help me say breathe. 
he breathed. And listen, it's very specific as to where God breathed. Trina, look at it. He said it's very specific there where God breathed into man. And from this point, we don't see what God had done other than forming man out of the dust of the ground. His hands had been in the process of making man. He got his hands in the dust. He got his hand involved in making fingers and making toes. His hands is involved in making ears and making hair. His hands are involved in making the backbone. The, the, the spleen, his hands are involved in making the kneecaps and the, the muscles. His hands are involved. But when it comes down to breathing, God used his mouth. <laughs> Woo! He stooped down and breathed into the nostrils of man the breath of life. When God gets ready to do something, church, it's good to have his hands on us. It's great to have his hands on my head, his hands on my back. But oh, when he's getting ready to do something different, I need him to breathe on me. Somebody ought to shout, breathe on me, Lord. I got the clothes. I got the clothes. His father there. I don't want nobody alone. The Bible said that he breathed. He breathed. He breathed into man. Listen, the breath of life. The Hebrew is ruach. Ruach there. That it was a wind. It was a wind that God breathed into man. Now from that point up to this point, man had been unable to move. He was inanimated. He was dormantly lying there. He was unable to get up off of the ground. He was unable to move his hands, or move his feet, move his eyes, move his mouth. He could not do anything but lay there. But listen, when God ruined into him through his mouth, into man's nose, the same thing that man did, man did what God did. When God breathe into man man turned around and breathed back to God and from that process the respiration process began and every time we take a breath no wonder the psalmist said let everything that have breath oh y'all ain't with me today he said let everything that have breath praise ye the Lord so God comes into man. Man lying there. God stoops down and man eyes pop open. Ears hear. Eyes can see God. His mouth opens up. And he does the same thing that God did. The breath of God, church, is what we need in this day and hour. Can I just preach and tell you that the only way we're going to get COVID out of our nation is we need God to breathe upon us. The only way we're going to recover from this traumatic experience, we need God to breathe on us. God is able to breathe so until he heals the broken heart. God is able to breathe so until he breaks the yoke. God is able to breathe. And when God breathes, church, can I tell you what happens? I'm closing now because Jesus follows the same model in the gospel of St. John. Here in the gospel of St. John, I heard Jesus the same day at the evening time on the first day of the week with the door shut, the disciples out of fear running and hiding. He shut 
shows up and shows them his hands and shows them his side. He shows them his wounds and they saw the Lord and some still doubted. And Jesus, when he appeared, he said, peace be unto you. He wanted them to know that everything gonna be all right. He said, I'm here now and I want you to know that I have a mission for you. I'm gonna send you out. I want you to go as my father has sent me, so send I you. But before you go, before you leave this upper room, before you walk out of this door and do what I have called you to do, wait just one moment. Let me breathe upon who God have mercy. I don't know who I'm preaching to in here, but somebody ought to lift your hand and shout Lord breathe on me can I tell you what's going to happen when the Lord breathe on you when the Lord start breathing many things begin to happen doors open up windows open up opportunity open up but most of all when the Lord breathe on you the main thing that counts is if you're able to breathe again and I came all the way from Memphis to preach this gospel this morning to tell somebody that I can breathe the devil had his knee on my neck COVID-19 had me down but here I am this morning and I'm breathing by the Holy Ghost I refuse church to die in asphyxiation I'm gonna lift my hand I'm gonna give God praise and I'm gonna keep on breathing every father day everybody shout yeah I'm closing in Jesus name I didn't mean to do all that today on Father's Day I'm breathing somebody ought to take a deep breath right now and tell him thank you Somebody ought to take a deep breath right now. Him, Lord, I love you. Somebody ought to take a deep breath right now and give him the praise. The breath of the Almighty. God has breathed into me. His power. God has breathed into me. His dimensions. He's breathed into me. His Holy Spirit. And now, I'm breathing again. The dark clouds are rolling away. Somebody's getting elevated here today. Just keep on breathing. He may not come when you want him, but just keep on breathing. It may not be fixed overnight, but just keep on breathing. Things may not turn around like you want, but just keep on breathing. The same God that brought you to it the same God that's going to bring you through it. Father, we thank you. Thank you for today's service. We thank you for Father's Day. This great day, this high day. This day of blessing, this day of recognition. We bless every father. Breathe on the fathers, Lord. Breathe on the fathers. As we try to do your will, breathe on the fathers. We try to raise our children in the way that's pleasing you. Breathe on the Father. We try to be the husband and the men of God. You're calling us to be. Breathe on the Father. Yes, Lord. As only you can. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful.